Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Wrestling Podcast. Um, today we're doing the Flow Wrestling event recap. I'm Will, one of our co-hosts, and I'm joined with our other co-host, Emmett Sherlock. Emmett, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, getting ready to talk some wrestling of this wonderful event uh, that happened July 25th from, held by Flow Wrestling. We had five really good matches, and I'm just ready to talk about it and see if our predictions went wrong, what somebody did better that you didn't know they were going to do. Just ready to, to talk about this event. So, um, as you will, do you have anything to say before we get started? Uh, heck yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to talk some wrestling. Let's let's get this started. Um, All right. Yeah, so I guess. Match, we have Sammy Alvarez and Vito Rujau. Emmett, you wanna you wanna get us started? Yeah, I'll take. I'll get started. So, uh, right off the bat of this uh, first 30 seconds, I noticed um, Vito was doing these stutter fakes like this and this, and it was getting um, Sammy Alvarez on his heels, which um, I don't know that I think that kind of affected him. Couldn't let um, it. It always made so the stutter fakes make Sammy Alvarez always think Vito's gonna shoot, you know. So he's always you know getting ready for the shot, and so it's it's limiting his uh, offense. Because he's worrying about Vito's shot, you know. So I thought that was a very good um, technique with the stutter fakes. And then also, Vito started off more, way more aggressive than him. After, after we saw that first push out, we just literally drove him out of bounds. So that was I guess that was pretty good off of him with the aggressiveness and the stutter fakes. I thought was a very good, very good tactic from him. And then, and then what I noticed about Sammy when Sammy and Vito shot. So when Sammy was so when Vito had a single leg, right, when he got that multiple times, when Vito was down on the mat, so when he wasn't up finishing, but when he was down, Sammy did a really good job um, defending. Even one time, he got the, the biggest point from him was um, mm -hmm. he the underhook. He, so, yeah, so Sam uh, Vito had a single leg, um, and uh, Sammy did the underhook and lifted him and got a four. So I just noticed he did a really good job when – you know, Sammy, you know, when Sammy could bring that single leg down to the mat and did not let him, you know, elevate it, make it uh, easier to finish. So I just noticed that was better from him was that, you know, on the ground. And so it was 5-3 going into the half, and Vito didn't let down just because he was losing. He scored, was that like, that was 13 unanswered points, right, okay. in a row, 13 points, so. Yeah, right off, hand fighting from Vito started off really good in that second half. And um, Vito scores with a single leg. And Vito um, – well, the thing I noticed is Sammy kept trying to go for that throw after, the same throw he hit in the first, which I don't know if he should have done that. He, he got a little try, – kept trying to get a little greedy and try to get another one because Vito got, got, got another four because Vito got a double leg on him. And Sammy tried to dig the under again, trying to lift them, and just went straight to his back. And Vito got another four and then got two trapped arm guts from that. So that, that gave him a huge lead. And then he finally gets that tech fall from another four from that failed, um, failed, you know, lift he tries to do. So I don't know if that lift, I think he should have tried to stick to, you know, hips in, sprawl, but he tried to, um, you know, get, well, I say maybe greedy and try to go for that throw again, which I don't know was the best, you know, moves because he gave up two fours after that. Yeah, what do you think I, about that? Yeah, I think I think Vito looks super good. I agree. I think his stutter fake throughout the whole match threw Sammy off a little. And then okay. I, I kind of noticed Sammy started doing a lot of stutter fakes too also. Nice. Yeah, Vito – yeah. Yeah, I saw that too. But Vito really wasn't – Vito really wasn't, you know, uh, reacting to him. And I don't know. So, yeah. And then also I thought Sammy – so what he could have done better, why is so his shots? You know that I think he only had like two successful, like two shots that were kind of successful. He got the lid on the legs, but really not successful. They were kind of diving in. It looked like a bird coming into a fish, you know. So I think, it, I think diving, and when he dived in, uh, Vito got that. He got two re uh, re attacks off of it when he just go behind and drop to a single leg. Yeah, I think Sammy. Sammy, I think he could have done a little better if he used his big, his size and his explosiveness. Because if, if you watch the match, Sammy looks bigger than Vito. Yeah, it definitely did. 
I just think he needed to find – well, um, you know, you need angles. He, he didn't have – no, he didn't find any angles with him. And he didn't – was he needed to find angles with some sort of um, setup. Yeah. So – and then also, I can just say, what what do you think Vito did good? I, I'll just go first. Um, he Vito did a good job, mostly keeping his hips down on his shots. Besides that one time where he got that lift. Besides that, he did a really good job keeping his hips, you know, down and sagging so he can't get, you know, lifted. And then he also did a good job with the fakes. Uh, that's probably the number one thing. I think he did a good job in the heavy hands. That made the fakes and heavy hands, you know, limited Samuel offense to about nothing. You know, you can't can't shoot when someone's boom booming on you. You know, so yeah. I think that's what he. That's I think that was the deciding factor was the fakes and the heavy hands. Yeah, I think Vito. I think Vito. My main thing is that Vito looked like he had his gas tank looked real good because yeah. Um, oh yeah, for sure. He in the second period he lifted Sammy up for that double. Sammy's a big thirty three pounder. Yeah, <laughs> that's one. That's tough to lift Sammy Alvarez up and then keep going like nothing happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I that, thought he would, yeah, I thought he was gonna be a little like, you know, gas after he only got one point when he had that double. I thought he was gonna let it get to him, but no, he kept going and his gas tank looked really good and didn't let that, you know, attempt that failed attempt for, you know, that big double leg. But yeah. yeah, I thought I thought he just looked very well. What do you what do you think? Yeah, I think I think Vito. After watching that match, I think Vito's I, he's already been in conti- contention for an All American, but I think Vito's in contention to knock off Spencer Lee. Spencer I, Lee. Yeah, I know that's, that. that's pretty high, yeah. high um prediction. But yeah. all right, but, all right. So we want to get into our next matchup. Yeah, I'll start. I'll start this one. All right, um, bet. This this match this is this is my highlight of the whole um of the whole card. Sam. Our RBY looked so good. Like Jack. it Jack Mueller also looked really good, but RBY just he looked so good. Yeah. But the those reattacks were so nice. Like Yeah. It was perfect. That's that's it. RPY just looked amazing. And he's definitely in contention for a national title. Yeah, I would agree. It was definitely – I would say – I don't know if it was the best performance because, you know, David Taylor, like, he made a national champion look like a kind of a scrub a little bit. But definitely the most improved. When we saw him from wrestling the Santo to now, that was – he improved so much. That quarantine – I don't know where he's been training at quarantine, but – Wherever he's been training has made him whew, a lot better. You know, he's made big leaps in his game. Because Jack Mueller, that's an NCAA finalist right there. That, that is no, you know, all Amer- like fifth place guy or sixth place or DNP guy. He's, that's, a, that's a finalist right there against Spencer Lee. That's, that's, uh, that's a really good guy. He made look not bad, but made him not look his best. So, so wait, yeah, I said, it, what surprised me too is he said in the documentary that People underrate his turns and um, his his turns and um, RBY uh, got that gut wrench, which made him get it was, uh, six. I got up six, I think. So yeah, and then yeah, the, what you said, the reattacks were awesome from him. He what and then what he also did it was kind of an interesting strategy when he put both hands behind his back, and I think that was very effective because you know Jack Mueller wants to get to the elbows and meat ties. Get to that left, that lefty single or the high C, and and the, so he really didn't. I think he really didn't tie up that much unless he was about to go. He wasn't sitting there hanging, fighting. He was faking, moving out. You know, you saw him bouncing up and down, and he did a really good job not um, allowing allowing um, Jack to really tie up and get to his high C or a sweep. So he did a really good job, and also like you said, the reattacks. What oh that was amazing with that one shot where um, what's it called goes for I think a sweep okay. and yeah Jack goes for a sweep and RBY just steps over yeah he steps yeah. over him and just gets his gut wrench after that and turns and like I think he had three reattacks three or two reattacks that match yeah and in R- also in RBY's interview he was like you guys need to watch out for my turn and 
and Christian Piles is like, um, you know what turn you're going to, or can, can, you tell, can you tell us what turn you're going to use? And he's like, no, nah, I, I can't, I can't say that. And then, yeah, and, it, and then like, it looked like he had more turns than that got rich because that, so he didn't get it though, but it looked like it was, it was, uh, what was it called? The cracker. I don't know what it's called, but it's like he had a, like, uh, a side headlock kind of. Or he was yeah. Hot trying, it was like, a, I think it's called like, I think they called it like the cracker or something. He has, um, a, Side headlock, so like right yeah. here, and then you try to step over, you know. So he has multiple turns just besides that gut wrench. So that's gonna be very, you know, very fun to see. watch him at the, you know, trials and from the future. I'll watch him at all these freestyle tournaments, and I think in the future that's that might be his spot, you know. Yeah, sixty yeah, one kilos. I think from now on that's gonna be his weight. Oh so, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But the thing is, can he make 57 for the Olympics? Because there isn't no 61. So is he going to is he gonna have to bump up and go 65? Or is he going to go 57? So I think if he goes 57, he's – yeah, that, that's a very good contender right there. Well, I was watching the HMA podcast the other day, and Jude said that um, RBY had to cut a little bit of weight for this match. So if he had to cut weight to get down to 137 – yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if he's gonna be able to get down to one. Yeah, three. but he also, I think he's also probably not in the, not I'm not saying not in shape, but probably not in the best shape like he would in a college season, because he also made one thirty three the whole year, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, yeah, that would be hard for him to make fifty seven. But the thing is, if he can, that man would be tough. Apt- yeah. Tough, yeah, that man would be good. So he's gonna go forty one this year. It's thirty three again. I think I think he go thirty three again. I think that's just the best best way for him to yeah, you know. Definitely go and then okay, let's get into our next matchup with um Darren Caldwell versus Luke Pletcher. I I'll start this one off. Um, so right at the beginning, I I can tell Pletcher had more freestyle experience than um Caldwell with keeping his butt to the center, which is a very freestyle savvy thing when you're supposed to keep your butt to the center. Um, and he kept getting getting the pressure on. So, butt to the center, you know, pressure, pressure, pressure. And then what Darian did, what Darian did a good job on, he was very eager. When he got to the edge, he knew he was into the edge. He had very good mat awareness. Yeah, where, he can, where he could circle not, and got that go behind. He got two push outs. So, he, very, very good mat awareness, I would say, by him. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, that's, that's, that was what I was going to say. My highlight with him is his mat awareness yeah. and his front headlock defense. His front headlock defense was crazy. Like Luke Fletcher, that a, against a guy like that, just circling out, like he made he made it seem so easy. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I I agree. Yeah, I don't know why, but then Darian got that. Uh, his second, so his first go behind, he did a shot, shot him off, right? The second um, push out, and the I think that was the second to make it was that. Three was it three two I think maybe if I'm not mistaken that when he he was getting dragged out right and he circles then he he pushes him out that was cause it looked like Pletcher had Pletcher had the advantage in that that you know fifty fifty there and that mat awareness and uh, uh, Darian still found a way to get a push out so I I know he lost but he's still like really impressive to my eyes it was really. I know it was nine two, but it was really five two because he tried to do that flying sport yeah. then. Yeah. But he looked very impressive for being out of the sport for you know six seven, six seven years, and then he comes and has a pretty good match against a top five. I would say up top five guy in the United States or, or top five or something like that in the United States right now. So, so I'm scared for the MMA fighters coming against uh, Darren Caldwell with his wrestling ability. Yeah, I think if Pletcher and Caldwell wrestled, if, if say it was like Final X, I think Caldwell would win one, Pletcher wins two. So, it's yeah. like out of three, I think. Caldwell I don't know. Win. I don't know. Darian just, no, I don't, I don't, I, I disagree with that because Luke Pletcher did a really good, he, he gave Darian Caldwell no chance of getting a shot or getting, yeah. he gave him no chance of. But he did, that's what I say. He did a good job of giving him no chance to get a spladle, no no funks. He and then he just looked maybe I don't know not bigger because Derek Hall was so tall, but 
more strong because we saw his uh, one of his go behinds. He literally just pushed him and he got like lost in the sauce, you know, and he yeah. got, got a go behind. Yeah, so, I, I, just, I agree. Flet- Fletcher did an amazing job. Keep getting out of Darian Caldwell's wheelhouse, like the splatle, cradle, any crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, um, so the thing is what I – the main things what Fletcher did good was heavy hands, um, a go behind, and, and that's what the advantage was, to go behind the pressure. And then Darren yeah. Cohen did a good job being eager for them points. And he did a, I thought he did a good job. I know he gave up two go behinds, but it took him a little while. He did a good job when he was underneath that front headlock. He did a good job squaring up and circling and stepping out of shots. He did a pretty good job. For the most part, I would say, of doing, you know, circling and swearing up. Yeah, Pletcher, that whole match, he was in an amazing position. He didn't get out of position at all. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So let's get on to... David Taylor. I'll, I'll start. I'll start us off for this one. All right. So I think in this one, David Taylor looked... So good. Like, if, if you watched him, you'd be like, is that guy Is that guy an Olympic champ? Like, he, he just looks so good. And his so- shots, he took so many just dive-in slow double legs on Miles well, Martin. I'm, I'm going to call them slow. I just call, I'll, I'll, I want to call them slow. Maybe a dive-in. Yeah, they, but they're, they de- they're definitely fast. The they weren't the greatest shots, but... They want, but the pressure, you know, shot, shot, shot. No one's gonna stop that. You keep shooting, no one's gonna stop it. So, uh. yeah, he just looks super good. What do you think? Yeah. about his call out on Sajulayev. Ah, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think he, if don't, I think he, I think he knows he he can beat him because I don't know. He won't. The thing is, he won't have called him out if he's gonna if because he's in the same room as Snyder. He wouldn't call him out if he's getting beat up by Snyder. So I, I don't believe yeah. – I think him and Snyder – I don't know. I might see DT getting the better of Snyder maybe. And – because I don't yeah. think he would call – I don't think he would call out Sajalu if, if he's getting beat by Snyder who's – who, you know, Sajalu – Yeah, but, you know, Snyder has, Snyder has beaten him before, so. Yes. So, 2017 World Finals, Snyder beat him. And then 2018 – Said you I have pinned him in like a minute. Yeah. So I think I think it'll be a good match because I'm I'm inferring or um get, um having a hypothesis is the word uh, that DT is beating up not beating up but I think he's beating Snyder right now because I don't think he's gonna call out someone who's pinned Snyder if he's not either beating him or very very close. Yeah, that, Emmett, that's that's a really good point. Um, I don't think DT would call out Sajulayev if he just goes in and gets his butt kicked by um, Snyder. Yeah. But, yeah, DT looks very good right now. So, my highlights from this match was um, hand fighting was the number one thing, pressure and shooting. But Miles just didn't look that – DT made Miles look not impressive at all. Like, yeah. he shot – What he did a really good job. So, this is what happened. DT uh, shoots right off the whistle, scores, gets a sweep. He shot off the whistle three t- – no, yeah, three times in that match. Right off the whistle. And kept – it was over and over – those three. It was over, over, over again. And just couldn't stop it. He, he literally just shot, 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 shot. And none of them, he stopped. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't even think that match was even – his gas tank, I feel like it wasn't even a big part in it because it was, like, a two-minute two, two minute match. I don't know. I guarantee Miles' gas tank was still pretty low because of that pressure. DT has the yeah. incredible he's, – he's so incredible to watch with his pressure. Like, he just – he's like a train. This is a train. It just keeps going forward no matter what happens. And it's, it's, it's pretty fun to watch DT to – what do you say, maul these people and make them look like – you made him look like a beginner wrestler. All you had to do was dive in. And yeah. Miles had no chance of stopping it. It just looked incredible. Incredible. That's all yeah. I got to say. Like, DT, his shots, like, were, his shots weren't even good. 
Like Yeah. Well the first like two were the first two were I would say. Like the last three takedowns are just yeah, diamonds. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what was up with Miles, if there was something going on. And He looked big, though. He looks a little chunky. Yeah. yeah. Not going to lie. Because he weighed it. That's, you see David Taylor, when he weighed in, he weighed in, like, clothes, and a, uh, I just like a big clothes on, a, you know, yeah. shoes and everything. And Miles Martin had a weigh in with, like, a singlet. And, and st- Miles Martin looked big. He looked very. He looked like he had to cut some weight to get just to get down to two hundred pounds. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't see the their weighing picks, but I I can imagine Miles had to lose a little bit of weight to get. To yeah, DC didn't look that. He looked big. though, he looks big, but he didn't look like he had to cut that much weight because he weighed in with like a big, a big like sweatshirt, he, like a quarter zip, and you know sh- like a singlet on. He, he just looked, he looked like he didn't have to cut that much weight, but like. You know, Jude Swisher said in our last podcast, what was that last? Uh, you know, the po- a podcast with the predictions. He like he said, as being one of his, um, what do you say, students or or wrestlers, um, as uh, David Taylor's as his coach. He said that DT was gonna bring six minutes of wrestling, and he brought that. He didn't. He literally did not stop one bit that whole match, and that's what that's what won him the match for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That must take his style of wrestling. You have to be so good, like so good to pull that, pull that off. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like crazy good. Cause David Taylor, he's been the best guy in the country and world since middle school. Like he was. I think he was – I saw something. He was like a six-time Tulsa Nationals champ. Yeah. He's been always – he's always yeah. been very, very, very high level. Yeah. At, what school you got to? St. Graham, right? Yeah, Graham. Yeah, St. Paris Graham, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the next one, the main event of the car. Uh, very trash talky, I would say, in the beginning of the – the build up of this match, Chimizo and Dake. We all we already knew Dake was gonna talk some crap. It's just Dake. Yeah. Chimizo Chimizo talked some crap too. It was everybody it was a really good build up for this match and everybody was very excited for it. And I thought it lived up to the expectations, would you say? Yeah, I I thought it was a really good match. I thought this is something I feel like a lot of people forget about. Chimizo, his style like when when he wrestles Burroughs, he made Burroughs look not as not like the number one guy in the world. He made Burroughs look like not a world champ. He he made Burroughs look like he's not on his A game. I I feel like that's what he did with Date too. And I'm not trying to like um I, I don't know how to say this, but like I'm not trying to make I I guess like excuses for Dake. Because he was talk, he talked like he sounded so confident, and like he was just gonna go in and like absolutely destroy Chimizo. But in reality, it was like a really close match. Like that shot Chimizo had on the end, if he shot that ten more ten seconds earlier, I think he. And, he the match. and if you notice, with one second left, he had a single leg up, as it was maybe like a foot away from being out of bounds. You know, give him two seconds. All you gotta do is put a shorter into him. That was out of bounds. And- and by criteria, he would have won that match with a step out. Yeah. So, one second away, Chimizo has the match. That's all I got. Eh, that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, Chimizo looked really good, Dick. He, all I got to say is Chimizo made me change my opinion about Dick and Barris. Yeah. yeah I, used to, I, I said Dick was going to win in our podcast a long time ago by the trials predictions. And now I'm picking Barrows to win that match. Barrows is. I feel like Burroughs is going to be our uh, representative for, for the Olympics in 2020 or 2021. Yeah, agree. Because. I, yeah. Go ahead. I, I, I don't know. I, it's, I feel like that's going to be really interesting. Cause yeah. For sure. Burroughs, for sure. Yeah. Because Burroughs is getting. Sorry, JB. I love you. If, if you're watching this, I love you. Um, but JB is getting. He's getting a little old. And there's there's no denying that. So, I 
I hope he makes the team. I love JD. He's one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, I I think he's gonna make the team. But I I, I don't know. It's I feel like Dave's gonna take a match. Oh yeah, I think it'll be a two one. It was two one last time they wrestled in twenty sixteen. Yeah. So I just think. They were really good at what's his name? Uh, Stake looked really good at Ma- uh, Mattia Pelosar or whatever. He was really yeah. good there. Um, but Dake, I don't know. Dake just didn't look as good. Maybe it was just a time off or whatever. But he didn't look as good as he did there. Um, but the thing is, my question what would, would the match have been any different at 74 kilograms? No. I think so. Because if you look at Chimizo, he did not look the best shape. You can tell he had a little pudge on him. He he did not look like he was in the best shape, you yeah. know. He, I, I, he posted on Instagram, he was like, I no longer have my six-pack anymore. Yeah, he just definitely does not look like the best shape of, of his life there. And, and the thing is, if he's at 74, it's going to be a little faster, a little more gas tank. Um, He's going to be – and the thing is – if Dick would have been as strong as 74 kilograms, Dick, if you see Dick how he wrestled, he wrestled with a lot of strength. That's how he kind of wrestled. He wrestled, he likes to beat up people with his double leg. He likes to beat, beat people up with his chest wrap. He likes to use his strength. And if he's at 74, he doesn't have that strength. He does it at 79 kilograms because he's, he's a big 79. He's not just like he's a small 79. He's a big, he's a big, he's, re- he's wrestled 86 before. He's just at 86 kilograms. So, and I think as a Chimiso, he started his career at 65 kilograms. That's no, no. Way. He, he actually started at 57. Yeah, it's like, but he, he was, he, won, he never won a world championship at 57. Yeah, he, was, he was 18. He represented the well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Duh. Well, I'm talking about like, couple, like, yeah, but still, he wrestled, and he just moved him 74 two years ago. Still, people think he's not the biggest 74. Some people stay, say he can still make 70, and I think he can. But I just – and I don't know. Chimizo, I just think at 74, it – you just he can't, you know, maybe he doesn't get that push out where Jake could just – Jake just bullied him out of bounds. Yeah. Maybe, m- maybe, maybe that doesn't happen at 74. Maybe Chimizo has time to square up because there's not as much pressure coming in forward or, or – uh, Shimizu doesn't get gun wrenched. Yeah. Shimizu, I just, but honestly, I kind of got a little lazy there. Yeah. If, he, if you see? saw, if you saw, but I'm saying, if you saw Shimizu, you think he was laying there, at there, and he looked, uh, got a little yeah. black lazy yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he got a little lazy. He was literally laying there like that and got gun wrenched. Oh, hang I, on. For, for Chim- I think from when I watched it, I kind of thought Shimizu. I think Chimizo wanted to let him roll through, and I think Chimizo went for the reversal. I think I, because that that gut looked so easy, like Dake Dake. Yeah, I just, he got a little lazy. I I saw him laying on it. If you pull it up, it looked like he was. It was like laying on his hip, and you don't want to be laying on your hip to the side. You know, and then also, okay, let's talk what. What is, what could have Shimizu done better? I have one thing I thought could have maybe done. I thought his game plan was perfect. Besides, maybe one thing. Do you have one thing that you thought he could have done a little better? Um, no. I I can I say I think people are talking about how Dake looked. I think no one is giving Shimizu credit. Shimizu looked really good, like against a guy like Dake. Who's won the world championships last two years? He's much. He's bigger than bigger than him. Chimizo looked really good. Like I don't think people are giving Chimizo enough credit really, for that. Yeah, I thought he looked really good. I just thought one thing could look better on if he. And people agreed. People saw. People said, "Hi, oh, he wasn't gonna score a takedown if he shot, but he did. He took him down. Yeah, he already did take him down. And then he waits ten seconds and shoots and basically almost takes him down. Basically, I said he would. Do you agree with me? Do you think he would have either got a step out or took him down if there was 10 more seconds left? Oh, yeah. 100%. So, 100%. I agree that his and – also, and also, if he doesn't take him down, right, it creates a scramble. And 
Who are you picking in a scramble? Are you picking Dake or are you picking Shimizu? In a scramble. That's tough. No. If if seventy four seventy four Tremizo seventy nine or yeah seventy four Tremizo seventy nine Dake. Hey, who are you picking in a scramble? I'm picking Tremizo. As you can see in the first one, it's kind of a scramble, where and you know what's called try to do that, try to do that. Um, he did try to do a, a cross lock and he scored. He stepped over it and scored. And then in the scramble, I'm picking picking Shimizu to win. So, it, especially if he has a leg, you know, he's already starting with that leg, getting ready, get it, get his hips up, getting ready for the scramble. I'm picking Shimizu to beat Dake in the scramble. So I just think Shimizu he fires one or two more shots that match, he beats him. Yeah, I, I, th- I think he waited a little too long. It's all like yeah, yeah, I agree. But um, the thing Dake, the thing Dake did really well. Um, I would say because you saw Tamiza what his his stance is very hot, and yeah. if you, if you saw in the last period how he was moving his head trying to play possum, you saw you saw that I was trying to play. Yeah, and he, he was he was kind of I think he was pretending he was gassed. So Dave yeah. would, he, he was trying to play. yeah he, he was trying to bait him because yeah. and I thought Dave did a really good job not shooting you know he did yeah, he, he, he has a very high wrestling IQ. Dave yeah. knows what to do. In all positions, he's he's he feels he's comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. So he just he had a good job. He had a good game plan. Come after him. Don't yeah. take take good shots. And I, the, the difference maker was that gut wrench. That gut wrench didn't happen. She means I would have won. That 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 was the difference. That gut wrench. And that's what he said. She, they kind of backed it up. They said, "I'm a turn of." That turn, turn, turns what won in the match. So yeah, I I think Kyle Dake is the best gut wrench in the world. One of definitely one of yeah I agree. Yeah, he looked he looked very very good, uh, but I don't know I'm still thinking Shimizu beats him at seventy four. That's all I gotta say. Okay. Um. What was I gonna say? Yeah, that scramble I had. I I don't think the match. Would, I think I still think Dake would beat him at seventy four. But I think in that scramble they had, Dake just outstri- – if they – if they had – if they were the same strength, Chimizo would take that. that I think Chimizo – Well, Chimizo kind of did take it. So it was 2-1. Well, no, 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 no. Take the match. If – because Dake, like – Lifted him kind of. Yeah, if they were the same strength – or if, if they – I think Chimizo is a more skilled wrestler than Dake, but Dake is just like strong. Yeah, I don't know if he's more skilled. I'll tell you more more moves. Dake's really good at what he does. Yeah, Dake. Dake's Dake, Dake, Dake Dake a diverse diverse wrestling styles. Yeah, Dake 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 is really good with his, what he does. he has his four or five moves, and that's all you need. Yeah. Literally, all you know, Chimizo has nine, ten, eleven. But sometimes having four four moves is way better than having 11, 10, 11, you know? Yeah, well, what does Dake have? He has his shots. He has a chest wrap. He has yeah. his sweeps. Chest, he has his doubles. Yeah, and chest, then he has chest, gut wrench. Gut wrench. So he basically has two, he has two positions. He has two, basically two things from everywhere. And that's what you all, that's all you need, two moves. Yeah, he has, he has two money makers every, every position that he gets to. Yeah, so I don't know. He looks. All I gotta say, Barrows, Barrows over Chimizo. I mean, Barrows over Chimizo and Dick. That's all I gotta say. 20, so, 21 okay. Olympics. Or trials so, and at Worlds. Do you think it's gonna be top three? Do you think it's gonna be Chimizo, Burroughs, and Sitikoff? Or um, USA, whoever makes the USA team? I think Dick and Barrows, whoever wins, wins oh, the yeah. Olympics. That's what I got. So I, really? That's what I got. I said that we have the best two guys in the world right now at 74 kilograms. That, well, that's what, what, what about Sitikoff? He beat Burroughs last year. He, 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 did, he, he did beat Burroughs. He did beat Burroughs. And if you look, no, not a lot, I don't, if I, I, I was listening to him, no one's ever, I don't think no one's ever beat Burroughs twice. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. one's beat him twice. Chimizo's wrestled him three times. 
She means I got that one win, and where was it? I forgot what it was. But I, I don't think he, he didn't win. I don't. That was a bad call. They gave him a four. I, 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 most people thought that was a bad call when he won. I, I thought too. Wait, I think he got like four when a four when he landed on his butt or something. When it wasn't four, but mm. but he beat in there and Chimizo. Then Chimizo wrestled like they, they. I mean Chimizo and Burrows wrestled again and Burrows won. No one beats Burrows twice. That's all I gotta say. Because what's it called? Be- Bexod, you might not know, but Bexod, one of the guys, I think he was the guy who Bexod. took out Bur- – Bexod's the guy who beat Burroughs who took him off from uh, – like, Wait, is that the Turkish guy? No, he's not Turkish. Um, he's a, I, I've met him before, but he um, – Bexod. Bexod beat him, and then they wrestled again, maybe the World Championships, I think, or some international tournament, and Burroughs beats him. No one I, – I, w- I want to see if anybody watching this, can you guys comment – as somebody who's beaten Burroughs twice. Well, he he's been beat. I he's probably been beat twice in college. No, I'm saying it's freestyle. Uh, Sidikov, that's I think. Has Sidikov beat him twice? Yeah, yeah. 2018 Worlds and 2019 Worlds. Sidikov beat him four times. Uh, I'm stat checking on that one, but. Not a lot of people can beat him twice. So, but I, I, and he's wrestled him. He has a, he knows what he has to do better against Sidikov. I just I just want to see Dake and Sidikov at the next flow card. Yes. Oh. My and Sidikov. Sidikov Dake, agreed. Sidikov Dake, agreed. Really? Dake yeah. and Sidikov, Sajulayev and Taylor. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah. Dake. Dake. Dake agreed. I mean, Sidikov agreed. I saw him flow. He, they tw- tw- uh, someone tweeted like the guy, you know, a guy who has like ties with Russia and yeah. who can talk to him. And then uh, Sad Jew have just laughed at David Taylor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you guys saw I, that. Yeah, I, I don't. Th- I think Sad I, I, Sad Jew's like, in my opinion, top five wrestler, freestyle wrestlers of all time. Oh yeah, is that was he a two? Is that a two Olympic champ right there? No, he I, he went out once. I checked his Instagram bio. He want, he's like a – I'll check right now. I think he's a four-time world champ. Um, yeah, one-time Olympic, four-time, and five-time European. Yeah. Yeah, that's – he Russia, a wrestling's big in Russia. I, like, I didn't knew – like, if you look at Burroughs and Sajulayev, you think – Sajulayev is more popular than Burroughs. Yeah, Sajulayev has a million followers on Instagram. Yeah, wrestling's big. Yeah, well, and Sajulai is probably the best wrestler in the world right now. I I got DT. I got DT over him. Really? DT looked incredible. He made a na- He made a national champion look like a scrub. I'm saying. Who beat Bone Nickel? A guy who beat Bone Nickel looked like absolutely. Not that good of a wrestler. He, he he just literally dived in and took him down. Like not a lot of I would say maybe maybe Sajulov can do that, but no maybe not even him. No one can take three diving shots in a row and take him down. Miles Martin. No one. Do you agree with that? Not a lot of people can do that. And yeah. the pressure But Sajulov is a lot big. He's a lot bigger than DT. Yeah, yeah. Well and I I think that match with Taylor and um, Martin would play out a little different if Martin was in Olympic trial shape. I I think DT would still definitely have it. It'd be an easy win for DT, but I don't think it'd be as dominant a tech fall as it was. I don't know. can't make excuses. He he, had ta- he he knew he had a match. And- yeah. Okay. So, Emmett, do you think DT is gonna tech everyone in the World Team Trials? Or mm, trials? Mm. Well, he's isn't he already at Final X, right? He, he's yeah. already at. He's already yeah. the Final X representative. Oh so, so. yes. Yeah. It's only one. It's only three matches. Two or three matches. And I agree, he will tech well. Whoever it is, probably. You know, he can take three. ball out of the I think he can. No. I think it's can uh, Derringer make the team. Yes. Well, no, Derringer, Derringer lost to Dake. Like, it, was, it, was, 
It was a good match. Yeah. I think – who agrees? You think DT beats Big now? Or – That's a thing. I don't know. I don't know because the last couple times they wrestled, people thought DT was going to win. They took Well, him. yeah. But DT has improved so much. So also, much. You can say same for Dave. Yeah. But do you think DT beats Chimiza more than 4-3? I think so. DT just – and there's yeah. also a weight. And there's also a weight. There's also a weight. Yeah, I think. I don't know. There's just some fun matchups you could see. Yeah. I think. Are we. Are you guys are ready to wrap this up? Yeah. But well, I, I was just going to say. D, I bet DT is probably about 30 pounds bigger than Dave. Not 30 pounds. Because what, what, what did Dave weigh in at? Once. Six. 97. They said he walked around at ninety seven or at <laughs> at uh seventy at sorry, excuse me. They said he walked around at seventy nine. So I think that's like one seventy five ish. Nah, I'll I'll look it up for you. I'm look up what seventy nine is. I'll look it up right now. Seventy nine kg in pounds. That is a whopping one seventy four, okay? Okay. And, and then, DT waited at one ninety one ninety six. Let me let me check the float um, weighing sheet. I think it was one. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. He goes to one ninety eight. Yeah, but he weighed. He weighed. It was so funny. He weighed in like a bunch of clothes on. Oh, yeah. Um, let me see. Let me find it. Give me give me give me twenty seconds and I'll find it. Imagine if someone missed weight for the. Um, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Like if, like, if Dake missed weight. Yeah, that that would be very – not a not a good thing for – Do you think they'd have – do you think Shemiz would have a match? Uh, they would probably still wrestle. I guarantee it. Someone's going to pound over. Do you think someone will say, oh, nope, not wrestling you? Yeah, well, yeah, they, they'd wrestle, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I can't find it right now, but – I think it was like 196, so it's probably like 20 pounds. Like, not, yeah, 20 pounds. No, yeah, 20, around 20 pounds. Yeah, I've been about 20 pounds. She has 20 pounds on but hey, thanks. You know who who I believe could beat everybody we talk about this today? Jaden Cox. He can beat Snyder. He can be, he's already beat Dick. He's already beat DT. He's now he's about to beat Snyder. Did what I say? Yeah, he's gonna be Snyder. He's too fast. I know Snyder's fast, but he's not that fast as Cox. Cox and Re- Cox can wrestle like a little little man. Cox wrestles like he can, yeah. he can wrestle like he can wrestle like Dake, or he can wrestle. He can be explosive of Chimizo. He can be explosive of Dake. He's. Didn't I believe Cox, it. Um, Snyder in like, like one ninety seven. And yeah. I, I mean, I, I think Cox beat him. He's definitely he, – and then they wrestled at Flurry all the time mm-hmm. when they were little. Uh, but, definitely. yeah, I, I got I got Cox beating every single one. Sag and Lula, Dake Ch- – Ch- 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 ah, Chimiza a little lighter. <laughs> Dake, DT, um, Snyder. I, I think she, Cox beats them all. So, do already- you – Emmett, do you think – Um, what was I going to say? I think America this year we can have an Olympic placer at every single weight. Fifty-seven. If Spencer Lee, Spencer Lee can place at any tournament. Um, I just want to see how good he does internationally. Yeah, yeah. That's well, the question. He's a junior world champ. He tech followed everyone except that one. Yeah. Event. Junior and seniors a whole different story though. Yeah. Whole different story. Yeah. I, I just want to see how he does. This is a senior, because some people wrestle really good in the U.S. but not that good internationally. I just want to see how good he wrestles. And if he was wrestling as good as he does in the U.S., that's a placer, I believe. Who's what's what's next? Sixty-five. Who, who, who's our representative at sixty-five? Would that be Yanni yeah. or Yanni or Zane? Seventy-four. Yeah. Burrows, Dig, right? And then. Or you can people. Cannot count Imar out. People are kind of like he, he took a match from Burroughs. 
Yeah, I, I agree. He's not, I don't think he's going to make the team. But he, I think he's going to give Dake some trouble. trouble. I don't agree. Dake, Dake, I, I don't know. I'm more... I'm more Dake is a different level of wrestling. It's just a different level. I'm more... I'm more... Like... Dake, Dake and... You can just see, Dave. You you think Imar can be a two-time world champion? No, okay. I, I never said that. But I think Imar could hold his own against Dave. Oh, he'll hold his own. I agree. I agree. I agree. He'll hold his own, but he ain't gonna beat him. He ain't yeah, gonna beat him. Yeah. And we just need some use those. Uh, wait, was that what year is that? When um, was that world champion world trials? Right. When when uh Imar and Burrows yeah. wrestle. I I'm in Burroughs wrestled last year at 2019. Yeah, that was last year. Well, Imar yeah. took a match from him, and then Imar was winning with like 10 seconds left by a point, and then that, Jay was, that, that was the first match, right? First match. No, right? no. But that wasn't the last match. That wasn't the last match because Burroughs won that last match by a good bit. I would say he he he, he won that match for sure. Definitely. Yeah, like, Imar. That was the I'm first match. Perform? That was I think the first match. No, yeah, I'm our, I'm our, the one that our, I'm our almost one was the first one, and then J, and then I'm our one the second one, and then JB beat beat him up the third one. All right, yeah, um, I'm ready to wrap this up. You ready to wrap this up? All right, yeah, I just want to say something. Um, go get some merch right here. Also, um, Prenex have been ordered. They will be on the website in next month. Um, what else? Um, well, uh, go follow our Twitter, same, uh, same social as our Instagram, TWP official 2020. And then our Facebook is TWP podcast. Yeah. So go, go check out our socials. We're def- we're going to be. Our socials will be under us and our websites up there. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just no, the website's right above you. Yeah. Right so, above in the middle. Well, this, um, our socials all down below. Yeah, our socials are under us. Yeah. yeah, so um, if you're not following us on Instagram, we're almost at 200 followers. So go follow us. We might we might do a special giveaway for 200 followers. Who knows? Yeah. Um. But yeah. Go. We're definitely gonna be posting more on the Twitter and Facebook. We definitely been we've been posting a good bit on there. Um. But we're gonna be posting a lot more on Twitter. Just go watch out on that. And yeah, thank you guys. Peace out. Have a good day. Uh, and get in shape. Yep. All right, bye. <laughs>